Welcome to 60 Skills. Today's topic is the use of incense. Ritual incense has a long and storied history in meditative and esoteric circles. The reason for this are many, and we'll get into some of those today. First of all, incense can be used to purify a space. Again, it doesn't seem to matter what you're using to do this with. Everything from Catholic Church incense to incense from a Buddhist temple seems to work equally well for this. Now, there are certain forms of incense that are used for banishment purposes. Asafoetida, in particular, is very commonly used for this. Likewise, there are also other herbs that can be burned that essentially work as etheric condensers that make the bringing in of form things much easier. Dittany of Crete, for example, is a famous example of this. That said, if you're going to use an etheric condenser like Dittany of Crete, you need to make sure that you already have access to Akasha and non-dual light. A failure to have access to this can make anything that happens to show up a little difficult to control. Now, ritual magicians are masters of using this kind of thing. But what are some other uses for incense? Well, on a very basic level, burning of incense represents a profound alchemical transformation. Okay, what does that mean? Basically, by burning something, this physical compound of the incense itself, you are liberating large amounts of energy. This, in turn, makes it easier to perform various meditative and magical items that you wish to engage in. Rituals, uh, consecration, regardless, burning of incense generates light and heat and energy that can then be subtly repurposed to do other things. So again, you've got the issue of, rich, of incense being used for purification and incense to be used as an energy source. If you are working with entities, entities seem to prefer certain kinds of incense based upon what they are. So it's very common to use a specific incense to bring a certain kind of entity for, forth. For example, cedarwood incense is commonly used in the evocation of Jupiter spirits, which is useful for things like money rituals or wealth-oriented issues. And there's a very long history with this, and there are dozens of different kinds of incense that can be burned for a given planetary association. And again, this is just one of many examples that this can be used for. So incense by itself is a remarkably potent and useful tool. All right, how else can this be done? Well, interestingly enough, when it comes to entities, what little we know about them seems to suggest that their vision isn't very good. Their sense of hearing works fairly well, but surprisingly, their sense of smell is most acute. Apparently, according to many people, most entities or spirits simply don't like the smell of human beings very much. They find it offensive or hard to deal with. So by burning incense, you can help cover this up a little bit. Additionally, the incense can be used as a kind of offering. Now this also becomes valuable because earlier we talked about how incense generates light and heat and energy that can be repurposed for subtle purposes. It's important to remember that if you're dealing with an entity, and I don't recommend using entities to do things, but if you do, you need to keep in mind these entities and creatures don't have a physical body in this world. Because they don't have a physical body in this world, they don't have breath, and by virtue of not having breath, they cannot generate energy. So if they are going to accomplish a task for you, the simple fact of the matter is they need supplementary energy to work with. This most notably usually comes from the practitioner themselves, which is why most serious schools of this recommend only working with a very limited number of entities at any one time as they can be rather draining. That said, the burning of sacred incense can give these entities more energy to work with so they can go and engage in the things that you're tasking them to engage in. Now that involves the art of evocation, ritual magicians are, ma are masters of this, and that is quite complicated. But the whole point that I'm trying to make here is that 
multiple uses exist for incense. Everything from purification to banishment to liberation and generation of additional energy to work with to also aiding any kind of spirit evocation you choose to engage in. So incense by itself is a very powerful tool. Now, there's conventional incense, which comes in cones or loose or in sticks. But also keep in mind, you can generate strong smells by using oil lamps and other oil purification type devices. These also work exceedingly well, depending upon what you want to work with. Now, I would add that incense or these oil burning systems if you're going to use them, you need to use them in a well-ventilated place. The simple fact of the matter is we only have one set of lungs and anything that we pollute those with is going to cost us later on. So keep in mind that if you're going to do this and use incense on a regular basis, that the place you're working with should be well-ventilated. For those familiar with traditional Chinese medicine, there's a whole practice built around this known as moxibustion, in which aged mugwort leaf is compressed and burned against the skin. So this might give you some other ideas of ways you could work with burning substances, i.e. incense, in, your, in the pursuit of your meditative and magical endeavors. Be well.